Another healthy proposal for Bimini. Ahead tonight, the bid that could revolutionize medical treatment as tourism there takes off. A new maritime academy is making a splash. The success rate that has allowed it to hold water for so long. And Super Shawnee, our top sprinter, makes it to the 200-meter world final. The National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. Good evening, everyone. I'm Candino Knowles. And I'm Keish Latterly. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Well, the $150 million expansion of Resort World's investment in Bimini is underway. But as Julian Reed tells us tonight, the groundbreaking ceremony wasn't the only new development unveiled for the people of Bimini. By Christmas, the first 300 rooms of the luxury Marina Hotel should be finished with 50 Garden Villa suites completed by the end of January. And over 350 working for the resort, 140 working for the casino, about 35, 40 working in construction. We're now talking about around 530 Bah Bahamians working here. And with this new development, it will take it up to over 800 Bahamian jobs on this island. Yeah. If that isn't saying something, yeah. what is? Resorts World Chairman Tan Shri K.T. Lim reiterated his commitment to Bimini and the Bahamas. The project is well on the way. The cabins are being constructed in, uh, in a factory in Finland and will be shipped across. And now it's a matter of Mr. Kapo who will build the basic foundation and the superstructure for the building to complete uh, this what I think will be a world-class hotel. An agreement with EDSA to create a master plan for Bimini was signed. But another big benefit for the people of Bimini will be enhanced health care services. Members of the University of Miami Stem Cell Research Center also participating in this initiative. We're looking forward, what I would like to say to the developers that we would want your help and a collaboration to ensure that together we put here in Bimini the optimum health facilities that will enable us to deal with these up to secondary care here um, using telemedicine procedures. We're very excited about the uh, opportunity for us to work together with the government of the Bahamas and we're very impressed with the uh, commitment to health that is after all what um, motivates us at a, at a medical school. We're committed to medical research, outstanding care and service of the community. We're very close by and uh, the needs of this growing uh, economy and growing society are very exciting to us and we're, we're very eager to participate in seeing that the health of the uh, people of the Bahamas are advanced. In Bimini, I'm Julian Reed for ZNS Network News. Well, Dr. Hare also commented on working with the Bahamas on the issue of stem cell research, while Chief Medical Officer Dr. Mercelin Del Regis embraced the opportunities for health advancement. Uh, with regard to stem cells, this is one of the most exciting new areas in medicine. I think worldwide it's felt to be a transformative area of medicine, and I think it's inevitable that the, uh, the Bahamas will be involved in this growing area. And it's very important, and we're very excited to see the government of the Bahamas deal with this issue in a responsible and ethical way. And I think not only would we uh, offer world-class health care, we would also be producing some, some top scientists uh, here from the Bahamas. Not only sportsmen, sir, but scientists as well. And we want to thank you all for the support that is promised to us today and we look forward to really achieving some of the goals that you have set out today. Well, it's an historic day for the country as education in the maritime industry advances. The LJM Maritime Academy held a cornerstone laying ceremony and officially introduced the institution to the country. The Lowell J. Mortimer Academy is located on the former Coral Island. As Cyan Thompson tells us, the academy will base its training on international industry standards and will prepare Bahamians to be among the best in the industry. 
The LJM Maritime Academy, in the works for five years now, is the brainchild of Lowell J. Mortimer in partnership with Campbell Shipping Company. The $25 million facility is expected to have three phases completed by next year. Prime Minister Christie and Governor General Sir Arthur Folkes both congratulated Mr. Mortimer and called the occasion an historic day in the advancement of the maritime industry. The creation of a maritime school here in the Bahamas based on the statistics that you've heard from Dr. Pinnock, in terms of how few, um, or how little the impact of the maritime industry is in the Bahamas on individual Bahamians, meaning right, that we can do a lot more to involve our nationals through training in employment and other entrepreneurial opportunities what we are doing today is making a giant step to bring Bahamian, the, the Bahamian seafaring tradition forward into the 21st century. Executive Director of the Caribbean Maritime Institute, Dr. Fritz Pinnock, will also partner with the Academy for more advanced courses. Pinnock explained the success rate of his institute. 97% of their students receive jobs within six months after graduating. We need now to stop using market data and start to use market intelligence. We need to look at where the industries are going and project our future employment in that direction. The LJM Academy's goal is to ensure that in 40 years, the maritime industry has 5,000 workers. The Academy plans to recruit 55 students annually for the one-year program starting September 2014. As far as tuition fees go, the cost is $25,000. However, Bahamian students will be subsidized through working and pay a fee of $3,000 for the year. We envision it from the fact that we have ships and we have to employ people on the ships and we thought why not train Bahamians to also go on our ship. We presently have an, an office in India and so we recruit heavily in India. So we thought that Bahamians need to have the same opportunity. The Maritime Academy hopes to expand in several phases. They also want the maritime industry to become one of the biggest pillars of the Bahamian economy. For the ZNS Network News, I'm Cyan Thompson. Prime Minister Perry Christie has responded to concerns of Free National Movement Chairman Darren Cash over the government's proposal to split the Bahamas Electricity Corporation into two entities. According to reports, Cash questioned why the government is considering offering shares for BEC, which is already financially strapped, when it didn't do the same for BTC when it was being liberalized. The Prime Minister said he doesn't believe Cash has all the facts on the matter and rushed to comment before getting an understanding of what's being proposed. Depending on the degree to which there is foreign involvement, the government would require shares sold to Bahamians. And so it, it, it really is not a, the kind of definitive position that Darren Cash is speaking to. I think what the FNM, the FNM's concern ought to be that my government will be making the big decisions. We're making the big decisions on all matters, including BTC, um, where um, I've indicated that final positions are being arrived at, and where they um, thought that it was foolish to believe that anyone would talk to me about 2%, when at all material times, this conversation with BTC, cable and wireless, could only have been sustained if in fact 2% was on the table. Meantime, Mr. Christie also said that as far as negotiations with BTC are concerned, he's not keen on extending BTC's monopoly in the telecommunications sector at this time. I have already indicated that though I have not gone to my government with the proposition yet, at, at, at this time in my thinking, I do not propose to extend the time for liberalization beyond March 31st, um, because as of the 1st of April, we will begin that process. That, I thought, was the position of, of cable and wireless, but there is a new position that has come to me as a part of negotiations from them, that um, I have given myself sufficient time 
and um, to consider it and I will be responding to what may be their final position. PLP Chairman Bradley Roberts is also firing back at the remarks made by FNM Chairman Darren Cash concerning the government's proposed energy sector reform proposal. Chairman Roberts said the proposal is in keeping with the PLP's election pledge in its charter for governance. The statement went on to say that while the PLP government policy is clear, progressive and inclusive, the FNM's energy policy was to criticize BEC, the BEC rate reduction offered by the PLP government, transfer the management of BEC to a foreign entity and distribute light bulbs to light bulbs to Bahamians. Robert said during the last FNM term, energy costs skyrocketed and blackouts were the order of the day due to a lack of preventative maintenance to existing power plants. The PLP chairman said that it's extremely important that the Bahamian people take note of the fact that as an opposition force, the FNM appears devoid of a national vision and plan to move the country forward. The prime minister recently announced plans to realign the Bahamas Electricity Corporation through a public-private sector partnership policy as an integral part of the government's plan to reform the energy sector. In our first look at weather, Tropical Storm Aaron formed in the Far Eastern Atlantic earlier today and it's much too far away to tell you anything about it, whether it will impact us, but uh, this high pressure system has it anchored out there. We'll keep it on the westerly track and should it survive the track across the Atlantic, it would not be until late next week before we'll be able to tell you what you need to do about this storm. So until then, keep posted and we'll keep you abreast with the movement of Aaron. Outside of our studios, mostly cloudy skies, temperature just around 86 degrees relative humidity 66%, winds out of the south southeast at 8 knots, your barometric pressure 1,016.0 millibars is 30.00 inches and it is steady. But stay tuned, temperatures around the family violence, travel and boating forecast is still to come. Well, coming up, the Minister of Education hands out grades. And Donald Thomas in the high jump final. Find out how he did. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by Shell Helix Ultra, performance you can see.